Welcome back to the show. If you are just joining us, this is KTN Life and Style. It's a feel good Friday. I'm your hostess with the Moses, Tandiwe Yego Agola, right yes. here. You sound so angelic in another life. I was meant to be a singer, but it's okay. We won't go into <laughs> that right now. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling awesome. How are you? I'm feeling good. Yes. Talk to us about the song you just did right now. This is my single, it's my latest single, it's mm -hmm. called Drowning, and mm -hmm. it's out officially, it's on YouTube, mm -hmm. and it was inspired by love. Mm -hmm. The concept is drowning in love, you know. Okay, <laughs> hey, I can tell, you know, there's a lot of emotion in there, even with the title <laughs> drowning. drowning. So when yeah. did you begin this journey? This journey I began mm -hmm. in, okay, professionally, mm -hmm. I started in 2017. Mm -hmm. That's when I released my first single, it's mm -hmm. called Milele. Mm -hmm another typical love song over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like you're, you're really into the love songs, but <laughs> there's lots of stories here, I know, to be told. Yep, mm -hmm. lots and lots. Mm -hmm. Like Milele was inspired by a crush of mine. Okay. Yeah, drowning, let me, let me get into drowning since it's the latest one. This was Let's inspired, <laughs> <laughs> this was inspired by a guy I, I, I used to date and mm -hmm. I just felt like he treated me right and I chose mm -hmm. to just appreciate that because you know sometimes we take things for granted good things mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. so I felt you know with my music that's how I express myself and mm -hmm. yeah that's how I, I chose to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm sure that um, there are so many artists out there that inspire you inspire your sound um, from mm -hmm. a local to even international um, viewpoint who oh, yeah. do you look up to who do you see and you feel like ah, you know that's the one her vocals are on point her oh, yeah. everything is on point I really look up to Karun, mm -hmm. Miss Karun. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know her. Oh, well, she, Soul. Who well, well, doesn't well. know Miss Karun? Uh -huh. Yeah, Sauti Soul as well. I mm -hmm. feel they are dope. They are really taking mm -hmm. time to master their craft, mm -hmm. always pushing themselves to the limits, and I, I really admire that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, collab wise, like who is on your list? Like top, top five, top five, top five. Let me put it at top five artists that you would love to collaborate with, either internationally or even locally. 
South Seoul and Karun, of course. Mm -hmm. And some artists that are coming up, Jerio Gallo, shout out, mm -hmm. Okelo Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, those are four. My goodness, why <laughs> are you not mentioning Blinky Bill? Mm -hmm. Ah, Blinky Bill. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, Blinky what? Bill is on I a mean, whole other level. I mean, I'm a bit of a crazy stalker fangirl for Blinky <laughs> Bill, so that is why I have to make sure that I... <laughs> confessions. <laughs> and, you know, nice, rightly, songs about drowning, let me also confess. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely fantastic. And Thank what you. have you been able to accomplish in terms of, are you able to perform? Um, at events or are you still just in the beginning phases of your career? Yeah, I am, I can say I'm beginning, I'm learning as I grow, but mm -hmm. I also perform, I do performances. Mm -hmm. I can do, I can even do weddings mm -hmm. and gigs. Mm -hmm. I've done quite a number. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, follow me on social media at agola underscore ke for updates mm -hmm. on my performances. I'll yeah. have some yeah. coming up yeah. real soon in May. In yes, May. Yes. And of course, we definitely have to talk about your support system. Number one, beginning with your parents, mm -hmm. because we all know African parents have this expectation of, you know, what you want your child to be. It's mm -hmm. either a doctor or yeah. a lawyer or an engineer. And when it comes to the creative, yes. you know, arts yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything like that, the creative industry, it's always yeah. just like, ah, like, uh, no, you know, this is not taking you anywhere. Music is not really happy, you know. I so know. what has it been like with your I parents? Know. I was also scared about that mm -hmm. when I, before I told them. Mm -hmm. But when I did the when I finally got the guts to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they actually took it well and they are very supportive. Mm -hmm. Actually, my entire family, shout out to my entire family. They're mm -hmm. so supportive. Shout I'm out. so blessed. Shout thank out. you, guys. She yeah. is a real talent, so mm -hmm. thank you for supporting her. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, I want to know what yes. is on your playlist right now because I feel like you can tell a lot about a person by the music that they listen to. So what's currently mm -hmm. on replay on yeah. your playlist? Uh, I have some locals in there. Mm -hmm. I have songs by Jerry. Mm -hmm. I have mine as well, mm -hmm. of course. Drowning course. Milele. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also listen to Internationally Healthy right now. Mm -hmm. I'm really feeling a vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. This has been such an enlightening talk. I love seeing how your mind works. It's always interesting to know <laughs> how people relate with the things that they do. And mm -hmm. your passion for music really shows through your voice. And Thank it's you. very, very, very important for mm -hmm. me to know uh -huh. who has been your mm -hmm. number one hand holder, like the person who's been with you since you began, since you started, not even your parents. Uh -huh. Maybe it's your boyfriend. Maybe it's your best friend. I don't know. So who has that person been for you? I have quite a list. My friend, my mm -hmm. best friend, mm -hmm. who is actually my stylist. If you check out the drowning video, mm -hmm. she did the styling and mm -hmm. even the concept was mm -hmm. her whole idea. Mm -hmm. And the... That's another friend of mine. Mm -hmm. My photographer, Marcel, mm -hmm. he, she, he also does an amazing job checking my pics for mm -hmm. those posters mm -hmm. you see out there. <laughs> and speaking of stylists, talk to, I love the boots. I, did, can we uh, get like <laughs> some kind of a close up on the boots, the whole, I'm loving the whole outfit. Thank Tell me, you. like, was this just for me, for, <laughs> you know, for Feel Good Friday? <laughs> or is yeah, this just your good usual Friday. vibe? Feel Good Friday. Mm -hmm. But my everyday vibe mm -hmm. is, um, I'm into a tomboyish look, mm -hmm. but yeah, I love to dress up mm -hmm. once in a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so one last time, give us your social from your hey, social, mm. social, social, okay. um, social <laughs> media handles before we go into a music mix. That's Agola mm -hmm. underscore KE for Instagram and Twitter. Mm -hmm. Facebook page Agola. Mm -hmm. And please subscribe to my channel, Agola KE. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, all right, you guys, as we go on this music break, we're going to be preparing to spill some serious tea on the catch-up segment with Violetta. Let's do me, Lele. Baby, no, 
Tajua siku gani mpenzi all right, guys, we are back. And if you're just joining us, welcome to KT and Life and Style hashtag Feel Good Friday. And right now, it's about that time for the tea. And my panelists today, oh my gosh, it's way too late. But before then, I have some tickets that I want to give away. It's all about the Avengers. And all you have to do is post a selfie of yourself on Twitter watching the show. And remember to use the hashtag KT and Life and Style and hashtag Feel Good Friday. And you never know, you could be the one walking away with this amazing ticket. But right about now, you know what we do? We get to catch up on what's been happening on the entertainment industry and my panel hi guys hi. y'all look so amazing hey. so quickly quickly introduction from my lady um i'm joy candy i am a fashion lifestyle content creator cool fully focused dj producer event organizer maria kini media personality yeah jinx radio guy podcast guy business guy all right, so yeah. there you have it. And right now, let's get into the story number one. And it's all about Coachella, guys. You know, it's one of the big festivals that happen in the world. And, you know, allegedly, Beyonce was paid less than Ariana Grande. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you shocked? I was shocked as well. I was you know. shocked. For real? No, because, okay, first of all, people don't realize that Coachella also, they broadcast all of their concerts. And it's usually two weekends. Yeah. Beyonce only broadcasted one of the weekends. Oh. Versus... Um, Ariana, I'm so old. Ariana Grande did yeah. both concerts, but also Beyonce sold her thing to Netflix, so she made sixty million dollars. Yeah, which is like Ariana, which net is net worth. Uh, yeah. So she's good, and also again, she broadcasted one weekend, so of mm. course it'd be cut in half. All right, cool. What do you think for? Actually, uh, they actually did get paid the same amount. Yeah, that's the what argument I heard. was the because Beyonce has more value, so yeah. people would expect her to get more money, but. Yes, she did sell her rights. Um, she did uh, maintain her rights uh, to the uh, to for Netflix for one of the three deals she had for sixty million. Yeah, mm-hmm. so she actually has two other specials coming with Netflix as well. That is part of that deal. So she wins either way. Yeah. To be honest, I really don't care. Everybody got their bag. Everybody killed it on Coachella. So <laughs> let's move on. I really enjoyed watching the Homecoming. Beyonce's queen. Forever queen. That's all I gotta say. It's <laughs> really all I gotta say. All right, so let me put you on the sport. Here uh-huh. in Kenya, who do you think can pass to be the highest paid artist? Be honest, guys. Um, honestly, and the reason why I do, I'm saying this is just because like, I know the business end of what they do and how it is that they do it and how much work they actually put behind every single thing that they do from the music to the videos to everything. Let me guess. Salty soul. <laughs> and also they're my boys. So <laughs> <laughs> y'all need to get paid. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's a no poker. Poker. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. She said it. I mean, uh, th- there's, there's a few things that have to be considered when, you know, uh, you're putting together a live show. It's a very separate skill set from the actual music production. It's a whole production by itself. So more people need to start putting in more. I mean, you create your value based on what you deliver, right? Yeah. So y- you've delivered good music. Great. Now, when you're on stage, I need more than just that good music, you know? I need a full production, I need to see lights, I need to see, you feel me, uh, choreography, that type of thing. And I feel like... Um, you basically want Beyonce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Male that, version. but that's how, you, that's how you create value and it's not enough of that going around. It's just the artist and the mic and yeah. it's not enough to get paid the big bucks. All right, so yeah. to so what's good? Clearly you have more fans on my panel, you know? <laughs> All right, next to story number two. You know, we've been having some artists who were really popping back in the day and they've been struggling to make a comeback. You know, I'm talking about people like Kenzo, you know, Big Peen, you know. I just want to know if you grew up listening to their music and right now that they are trying to make a comeback, what do you think of it? What should they do so that they're back to that space where is there a chance Sheesh. or no? You know, be honest, guys, you know. See, we, we music <laughs> changes. Music is always changing. And that's one of the hardest things. You have to be uh, understand the business to adapt to the times. And, uh, and this is in every genre. It's not just in Kenya. It's in every market. You know, just like we've seen in, let's say, in hip-hop, that people who were popping 10 years ago, that it's hard for them to come back. So it's always a constant ability to adapt. Um, and if you can be able to adapt, then yes, you do have a higher chance of that. But at the same time, it's, uh, and when I say adapt, is understanding what does the audience want and be able to position yourself the right way. So it's not impossible. Like we see, Nameless has always been able to maintain himself and reinvent itself. That's a key part of the business, reinvention. So that's all it takes, really. All right. Joy? Oh, um, 
so I didn't grow up in Kenya, so. Oh, yeah. okay, guys. So you <laughs> had uh, like, way like too like bougie, my, guys. My thing starts <laughs> from like nine years ago, ten years ago, so okay. anything before that, I'm just like, yeah, yeah Destiny's Child was like, yeah. <laughs> 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 If you're lame, that's a shame. You can't hang with us guys, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, I agree with Fully, like, evolution has to happen. Change is always inevitable. Like, the sound that was there ten years ago definitely wouldn't apply right now. And I feel for these artists, if you're not ready to adapt to the new sound that's currently booming. Um, I also feel like, uh, you know, there's been a deep structural issue in the music business in Kenya as far as uh, rights holders goes, uh, go and uh, uh, royalty arrangements, distribution arrangements, that type of thing. So I feel like the artists who were very popular then didn't really make enough bank. So, and, and that's why you see a lack of continuity from one generation to the next. It's like uh, the artists do what they do, but they don't build something that the next generation can benefit from. So they come in and start building from scratch as well. So now they're actually fighting each other. The guys from the past decade and this decade are all fighting for the same piece of cake, which shouldn't be the case. You know, the guys from the past decade should have set up these guys so we we need to there's some structural issues that need to be looked at but i definitely do agree with what he says though that like just it's a concept of you have to move with the times the same yeah. way we think about like in the u.s with snoop dogg like he's stayed relevant forever in yeah. the music industry but that's just because he understands like he goes with the flow as opposed to some people who just decide my way is what's right so i'm gonna stick it through and also i'm not bougie i used to live in subsidized housing this hey. is a different hey. all right, all right. she's trying to be modest over here but it's i'm fine. not it's being okay, modest i used to live in <laughs> subsidized housing my all mom right. used to work three jobs <laughs> <laughs> all right guys there you have it so i guess my panelists think there's still hope for this artist all they have to do is evolve with the times yeah cool on to story number three which i really need you guys to be super honest you know social mm -hmm. media and relationships we have seen a lot of public display of affection i'm in love i'm gonna post it all over social media and when things go haywire i'm gonna go back there to attack you know my ex you know case point we have um chloe kardashian who has also been posting memes rather to attack tristan again you know and i'm just wondering have you ever been in a situation where you feel like i have to shame this guy or this girl on social media and what do you think about that like this generation and just social media for relationships what do um, you guys think for me personally i mean like that's my money like social media and content creation but um i've always felt the like i've always had the belief of what's closest to your heart should always stay personal i don't feel like you should um, post it out there, but then I feel Chloe and the Kardashians are a completely different thing because that is their money, them like talking about their life and their life is a relationship, so that is their bank. So if that is how you make your living and that's what people like wait for, then you have to do that. But I think on a regular basis, I'm not really a fan of posting anything um, personal, whether it's relationships. Like I rarely like I talk about my mom, but I don't post photos of her. And the same way even with friends, like I don't have to feel, I don't feel like I need to even write happy birthday on my Instagram page. Like I'll call you and just be like, happy birthday, boo. Like I don't need, like I don't need that, um, that I, I don't have that need to post everything that happens in my life. Yeah. yeah. Funny thing, some people will post you on social media and not even call you. Yeah, that's weird. You know, <laughs> that's so like weird. I would prefer like, you, you know. call me versus yeah. just being like, hey, happy birthday. On, on in, like on Instagram, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Like I'm just like, I guess. Fully focused. Have you been a victim Keep your relationships before? private. Okay. Plain and simple. We've never seen no <laughs> girl from this guy. The minute you put it <laughs> out there, yeah. it, it, it goes from our relationship to our Everyone, yeah. You know and saying? then people have opinions. So exactly. And now people feel <laughs> ownership of it. So, yeah. yeah. Nah, seeking for validation on social media, that's where everything goes left. Like he said, just keep your personal business personal. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, there's a real issue here with, uh, you know, people chasing instant gratification you know getting their dopamine from the likes so i mean it's something we need to look at see how depression is on a all-time high because of social media so if you just look at those kind of studies then you just got to figure out how to maneuver through social it's not it shouldn't be a diary you shouldn't like everyone can't access everything about you come on yeah. But to be honest, I really enjoy when people are posting that drama. I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, I'm that person I'm too. Yeah, like, no, 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 I am 100% that girl. But then my issue is I can't stand it when people post their entire life 
And then all of a sudden ask, like, I need some private time to handle my... I'm just like, Mm-mm. no, 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 no. Continue. You brought us into your bedroom. <laughs> I want to be there for the divorce proceedings. I want to be there during the child custody battle. Like, you brought us from the halfway. You can't cut it off. You'll you be can't lurking cut it off on the shade room. Huh? <laughs> You'll be lurking on the Always. shade room. Oh, I am hard on Always. the shade room. <laughs> <laughs> I follow shade room, Hollywood Unlock, all of them. TMZ. TMZ. <laughs> no, don't put... Okay, my thing is, I don't care about your life if you don't give me all your information exactly. yeah. but if you give me all you like you're over there with your boyfriend in bed and you're doing that like constantly when you guys break up i want to know why yeah, yeah we'll I, I got committed it. like we're in this together <laughs> this Instagram is why in you keep your relationships private yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because because of people, like people like me <laughs> and i know people like me because i am me which is why i'm quiet about my life <laughs> Here we are, Instagram in laws Hi, and Alyssa. She just got engaged, and she was, you know, we had to know that. So we are also waiting to see how the wedding goes, you know, all those things, right? Aren't okay. you waiting? Wait, so yeah. who got engaged? Annalisa and Ben Paul. Oh, congrats. Okay, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. shout out to Annalisa. Yeah, you know. She's one of those who always lets us know what's happening. They even have their own Instagram page of what's happening. You what? Know? Like no, a for real? real. No, a joint one. Like a relationship? I've been yeah. curious. Yeah. What happens if you guys exactly. break up? Exactly, what happens if you guys break up? Well, clearly the one who was operating that account is fired, guys. And there's no more posting. Yeah, guys. Wow. One more. Okay. All right. Keep your yeah. relationships okay. private. Yeah. I'm gonna say it again. Oh. <laughs> Yo. All right. So let's take it again back home to Timmy T. Dot guys. You know, mm -hmm. he just recently released our song. It's a remix to a song, Asante Barber, and he features um, Rosa Ray. And you know, you remember when Saudi Soul released Nishike, and there was a whole lot. Oh my I God. Think it was fire. Yeah. It was like too much, and then Ezekiel Mutura came banging, and then I'm just thinking, okay, Ezekiel, do you have anything to say about Timmy T? Have you guys watched the video? Yeah, I yes. think I've seen a snippet. What? Is it the one that came out three weeks ago? Yes. Mm. Oh, then yeah, I watched it. No, yeah. not three weeks ago, two when? days ago. Oh, then I watched it. There's the a one. remix. Oh. So the original song is quite old, and then there's this remix that she features, you know, Rosaray, and it's a I very... I watched that. Yeah. Yes, two songs, yeah. which is Rosaray, these oh, keep, man. keep okay, vocals, something confused. like that, okay. and this Asante Baba. Oh, yeah. Santa so I just want to know bad. what you think about the video. Do you think Ezekiel Motor will come knocking on their doors? Bruh, he's doing the most for real. Like, he needs to chill. Wipe he needs to chill? Bro, Do you think like, he needs to chill? Do you think Kylie so uh, every other person? No, but Kylie B's in the US. There's a difference. But I also have, I have an extremely high threshold for um, things that shock me. So I'm sure, like, I don't think I've watched the newest one. I'm sure there'll probably be a two on my, like, no, radar. Like, like a five? He's doing the most. Like, he See, now that you're saying that, I'm so most. ready. Like, what yeah. would you say, like, um, Salty Soul was on a scale from one to ten? Um, hmm, let's see. I feel like Salty Souls was a bit, you know, there's, okay, no okay, offense. There's, there's a bit of class. If okay, you so yes. 1 to 10? t Dad cool. is just straight ratchet, bruh. Like, no, no, but I'm trying to, like, uh -uh. range. So, Saudi Soul, 1 to 10? I'd give it an 8. Okay, and then, um, to me, t Dad? I'd give it, like, a 10.5. Wait, you thought, yes, you thought Saudi Soul was girl. an 8? I thought that was, like, a, like a, yes, a song girl. like, 4. Like, nah, he mm. needs to Maybe simmer down. Maybe 3. <laughs> half. Nick, to you guys. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back with more juice, guys. More juice. Stay right there. More juice.